I'm Lisa and this is my podcast, Stop, Drop, and Knit. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me for a little while today. For um, my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. And for anybody stumbling upon my little channel for the first time, thanks for stopping by. I hope that you find something here that you like. Um, this is a new podcast. It's only my third episode and I am having a blast showing off all my knitting projects and a little bit of spinning projects and just telling you guys everything that I feel like saying about my knitting stuff so okay so first things first what am I wearing okay so this sweater was my first ever test knit project ever and I was a test knitter for Annie Lupton and she is Bo Boho Chic Fiber Co. Right? Boho Chic Fiber Co. I must have test knit this sweater about two years ago. Right around, right around this time I finished I think. Um, so I'm gonna stand up so that you can get a look at all of this cable-y goodness. There is so much fun texture in this sweater. Um, let's see, that's the front and then the the back is identical and I probably should have had my camera a little bit higher. And then, yeah. So, um, this is called the Easley sweater and it's got this like boat neck opening neckline here and then it is a like argyle-ish crisscross um, cable pattern on both the front and the back. And it's like a boxy shape. So basically like you knit like a box with a boat neck and two sleeves. And I knit this two years ago and I'm trying to remember what the construction was on it. I think I did seam it, so I did knit this in pieces. I, I knit the back first, and then the front, and then each of the sleeves, and then seamed it together. So, um, yeah, super fun pattern. It was maybe not my first time doing cables, but definitely my first big cable project. So let me tell you um, about the yarn that I used for this. So this is what I have left. Um, it's a fingering weight sweater. This is probably a little bit more of a light fingering weight. Um, I bought this yarn when I was on vacation with my son and my husband. And we went to, we went to Chincoteague Island in Virginia. Um, We've been to Virginia so many times, but it was the only time that we went to Chincoteague. And it's a really, really fantastic location. Um, you probably may, may have heard that this is where the wild horses are. Um, I know that I have some pictures. Most of them, you know, they're pretty far off in the distance, but I'm going to dig through my camera roll and see what pictures I can I can dig up and insert here because it's a really cool place. There's beaches, there's places to hike, um, and there's wild horses. Wild horses are not something that you see every day here. And it was the first time that we had ever seen them. And it was just really, really cool. But on Chincoteague Island is this adorable yarn shop that of course I had to go visit. Um, and it is called um, Carradin Farm is the name of the shop. And she's got um, yarn from all over, like a nice selection of yarn. But what I picked up from her was this yarn that she um, hand dyes herself. So um, this is on a 100% merino wool superwash and this one is called um, Chincoteague Colors and this color is called Tugboat. 
and I love it. So I had I don't usually gravitate towards brown yarn, but brown also is a, it's a good color, and I just loved um, how it was like a tonal yarn, so not solid, but um, just a lot of variation in it. So this is all that I have left. So at some point I'll probably use it maybe as like heels and toes and a pair of socks, or this might even be enough for um, like the main, no, actually I probably won't use it as heels and toes because it doesn't have any nylon in it. You can, um, but this will actually probably be enough to make socks for Owen. And I could do like a different color for the heels and toes for him because he's pretty hard on his, on his knits. So, um, so maybe that's what I'll do with this. Um, yeah, so I, Definitely, if you ever, oh, this is also called, um, so it's part of the Cove collection, is what it says, and there's 425 yards of 100% merino superwash wool, and if you ever get a chance to go to Virginia and go to Chincoteague Island, um, just be aware that there is a cute yarn shop there. I heard about them, I think, the very first year that we went to Maryland Sheep and Wool, which would have been 2018. Um, they had a booth there, and I had never heard of them, and so I had picked up a skein of something different. Um, just one skein of something beautiful, and I think a sock yarn or something to use in a shawl. And then when we were going to plan um, a trip down to visit some family, we made it a point to actually stop at Chincoteague Island because it was a place that we had never been before. And so, yeah, so that was super fun. So this is the Easily Sweater by Boho Fiber, Boho Chic Fiber Co. Annie Lupton is the designer. I will put all of her information, I will insert it right here, and I will also put it in the description box below this video. Um, yeah, and so this is Easily, and I really love this sweater. I wear this one so much. I think um, it was meant to have like a bit of, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit, a bit of a boxier fit, um, but I, I kinda had to block the heck out of this. But again, you know, I didn't do any kind of gauge swatch or anything, I just kind of cast down and went for it. But this probably is a little bit more on the light side of a fingering weight. So that's totally, um, totally my fault. But I, it does have a nice stretch and I was able to um, block it out to a flattering shape and I wear it all, all the time. And it is a beautiful 60 degrees today um, in mid-November approaching the end of November. And so it's actually the perfect weather for a light figuring weight sweater like this. Okay, so that's what I am wearing. I know you guys all know what this is. So I'm gonna dig into finished objects because this is really pretty much, oops. This is pretty much the only one I've got. Um, I'm not gonna talk about this a lot because I just put up a video completely about this sweater, but I figured since I really don't have anything else for my finished object section that I would bring out my finished Aurora cardigan. And oh, I love, 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 love this thing. I'm, I'm not gonna tell you anything else about it. Just go watch my other video because I pretty much went on for 20 minutes about everything about this sweater. So anything that you want to know, about the Aurora cardigan, as far as the pattern, as far as the yarn that I use, um, as far as these cute, adorable finishing touches. So I'll tell you really quick, labels are from Kylie and the Machine down in Australia, and my cute fox buttons are Katrinkles. Um, and yarn is Jill Draper makes stuff, Mohonk Light, and everything about this sweater is fantastic. So that is all I'm gonna say about this one because I dedicated an entire video to it. So, all right, 
I do have um, partially finished objects. So I was knitting these little mittens for Owen and I don't I think that I might have gotten one of them done for the last video, but now he has a mitten for both hands. And he also has a hat that is finished and I did add a pom-pom to it. And I cannot show it to you right now because he wore it to school. And actually that's where Bunny and Mouse are today too. So normally Bunny and Mouse cannot go to school which is fine with me because they're precious and I don't want anything happening to them. So he carries a picture of Bunny and Mouse with him everywhere that his teacher laminated for him. Well, Owen is turning six on Sunday and so his teacher asked um, if he would like to bring in something to do a little show and tell to help celebrate his birthday. Um, and he chose Bunny and Mouse. How knit worthy is my kid my kid is so so knit worthy so the three of them should be home from school very soon so hopefully bunny and mouse enjoyed visiting owen's first grade classroom and hopefully he brought them home I'm a little bit worried about that i think i think it'll be fine i think he will remember them and yeah, because birthday weekend, if he can't get Benny and Mouse back until Monday, birthday weekend is going to be problematic. Yeah, so I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to assume that they are fine and happy and had a, had a lot of fun. So that's where Bunny and Mouse are today. I don't have my little mascots. Um, but it's not cold enough where Owen felt like he needed his mittens today. But I guess this morning when he got on the bus, it was chilly enough for him to wear a hat. So I just, I can't show you that. But, all right. That, that's all the finished objects that I have. Just this but this is a big one so yeah so let's move on to whips I guess at this point now this has turned into a whip so in my spinning section I was I showed you all my my hat and let me get one that's not so crinkled up and that I had my first my first hand spun yarn and I made a hat and I had like 37 yards left over. So I want matching mittens to wear with my hat, but I didn't have enough of my hand spun to make just um, full on mittens only with my hand spun. So what I did, what I've started to do is I, I went stash diving and I found this um, vintage chunky Barocco, Barocco. I don't know if it's Barocco or Barocco. I have no idea. Somebody tell me. Um, and this color is 61176. I think it's like a, a heathered purple or something. Um, so I have this, this is leftover from a hat that I made my nieces a year or two ago. And I thought that these would go really well together. So what I did, and this is what I do when I am knitting mitts for Owen, and he just has a little bit left over from his hat, is I do the cuff part in whatever's left from the hat, and then I do the, the main body of the mitten with a coordinating color. So I'm not too far. I didn't get um, all of my increases yet for the thumb. So this is just, um, this is a free pattern by Tin Can Knits and it is world's simplest mitts. And so I've, this is always the pattern that I have used for Owen's mittens. So I figured I would try, I would just try making them for myself. So it's kind of hard to tell what they're gonna look like yet, but I. I'm sure that I'm going to have them done with a day or two, within a day or two, and have those to show you guys next time. All right, so my only other 
whip is um, just the sock that I started for Owen. I didn't, I didn't even finish a single sock yet. Like it has been a busy week. I had my last week of teaching my college kids on on Zoom and they all had recitals and everything and with Owen's birthday. So I just, I don't know why I didn't get a lot of knitting done. So for my socks, for my socks, I did an afterthought heel for the first time. Um, and I don't have those today. They're finished. I think I showed those off last time. Um, but with Owen's, I just wanted to go with a sock pattern that I use for him all the time that I know works really well. But I did still do the um, contrasting heel flap and um, in, and the heel turn in the, in the bright orange. And he was so cute when I showed him. I was working on this yesterday. Um, a little bit after dinner while he was finishing up his dinner and just chilling out and every time like I got another little part done I would say hey look here's how your sock is coming so like I had I had it done like without the heel at all and then I added the heel flap and he's like well, that's cool and then when I did the heel turn and it had that little part where all the magic happens he's like how did you do that <laughs> and it was so cute I just said it's magic so um, I finished, um, I got all the way through the gusset decreases, and now all I have to do is knit the foot and the heel. And so these are gonna match my socks. This is made out of um, knitterly things in the Sleepy Pumpkin Patch colorway, which is fantastic. I love it, Owen loves it. Um, he's an orange kid, so he actually prefers this bright orange that I'm using for the heel. Also knitterly things, just in like orange. I think it's just called orange. Um, yeah, so those are, those are my only whips. Not a whole lot happens this week. But I am starting to make plans for some other sweaters. And I did a bit of stash diving. Well, I mean, I had had this yarn earmarked anyway um so let me grab it so last time i think that i mentioned what i was thinking about casting on in a worsted weight yarn something from my stash that i had had purchased more than a year ago and just kind of waiting for the right time to cast on i figured i wanted to do a, a worsted weight sweater now because it's get, it's getting to be that point where you can wear worsted weight um, and it'll you know it's warmer than fingering weight I wear my fingering weight sweaters all the time they're great for all the time um, but only um, a few months out of the year here maybe up until about March you can wear like um, a worsted weight sweater and comfortably and not be too warm so I have decided that I am going to cast on this weekend the Worsted Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. And this is the yarn that I had purchased for it. So um, this is Malabrigo Rios, which is what Hohi used for her, for her sweater. And so it's the recommended yarn. And I had picked this up. Um, over a year ago at um, the Knitting Garden in Huntington, New York, which is an adorable local yarn shop, which is very close to the college that I teach at, the one that I haven't been to since March and the coronavirus. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I haven't actually been to my job in Huntington, like most of us, um, since March, which is kind of sad because there's this cute little yarn shop that you know every I tried to visit every once in a while at least maybe once a month or once every every six or eight weeks or something I'd try to pop in there um, so I miss it I was I was there for my birthday that weekend but I haven't been there basically since everything shut down um, but they have Malabrigo and they have Rios and so this is called Va. It is color 051. OK, 
Okay. So I just, I still have two skeins that I did not line yet because I wanted to show you um, what it looks like just in the skein. So there's like, it's, it's mostly like a really dark green, but also has teals and like a yellowish green. Um, and you can see like this skein has a section that has maybe a little bit more brighter blue in it. So this is what I'm gonna use for my boxy. And I already wound up four skeins. So I am all ready to cast on. I just need the opportunity. Um, I wound this up a couple days ago. And so here's what it looks like all kicked up. And so again, this was um, a color outside of what I normally gravitate to. And I feel like I'm telling you guys all the time how, how I always buy purple yarn. And then aside from my hand spun here, I really, I haven't shown you anything purple. Um, and that's because I just, I have so much purple yarn in my stash that the, the things that I have done more recently, I have, I have tried to make a conscious effort to not only look at the purple yarns, because I bought a lot of purple yarn for my birthday. Let me tell you that right now. There's a lot of purple happening. <laughs> um, so I'm not done purchasing purple yarn, but um, I wanted a little bit more variety in my stash because, I mean, how many, how many purple sweaters <laughs> does a girl need? Probably no limit, but, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of variety every once in a while. Um, so... I shopped my stash to, I mean, I had already had it earmarked specifically for this sweater, but I think that I'm going to have a little section on this podcast called um, Shop the Stash because that's really what I need to be doing for basically the foreseeable future. Um, so last week I mentioned also the Forager sweater that Isabel Kramer has just put out and I will be shopping my stash for that. I just haven't dug through my stash to find what I want to use it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get this sweater cast on and then do some stash diving. I like to have multiple, multiple things going at a time. I am definitely not a monogamous, 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 there we go, monogamous knitter. I'm not. Um, okay, so that is that. By the way, this bag, I should actually hold it this way. I've just been using this bag to like haul all the stuff I want to talk about out here um, when I do my podcast. But this bag is huge and it is awesome. And I got this bag for Christmas two Christmases ago. It was one of the things that I asked for from my husband. And this is if you didn't know already a mrs brown's bag so this is the only one that i have and love this color because i love rainbow and i just i love that it's huge um i take this bag with me when i go to festivals so that i have like a nice big bag to stick all my woolly purchases in and yeah so um i love this bag i don't actually have that many project bags that are like meant to be project bags i just usually kind of use whatever i have um like um this one over here i i always keep my sock knitting in this cute little bugler 360 bag with these like otters on it um and it's just the perfect little size. It's got these little handles and it's, it's just perfect for a little sock project. So I can usually fit maybe one or two pairs of socks depending on who the recipient is um, in here at a time. And so this is just what I always use for my sock knitting to just carry that around. So for my knit worthy section today, I wanted to talk about a sweater that I made for Owen this fall um i think at the end of the summer maybe maybe august i cast on this cute 
little newt sweater. And this is a pattern by Martin Story. Um, and I definitely did the intarsia completely wrong. Obviously, I know how to do intarsia, but I did this like it was regular color work. I don't know what I was thinking. But um, a couple years ago, I purchased the yarn for this project, knowing that I was gonna knit this for Owen, and then I've just, I've just had it sitting around, and then I, I just, I figured that I needed to cast it on before he outgrew whatever, like, the largest size I could make out of the quantity that I had was. Um, I probably had enough. I have so much left over. Let me tell you about it. Um, so this is knit with Rowan Soft Yak DK. And they come in 50 gram balls. And as you can see, I have purchased exactly what I need. Maybe I purchased what I needed for like the largest size, not, be, not being sure when I was gonna knit it. Maybe that's why I have so much left over. I don't know. But I have um, an entire skein or entire ball of the um, blue. So this is color 00243. I have this much left of this. Oh no, I have even more. I also have, I also have this. So I have, I have this much left. This yarn is so soft. Um, let me show you. And I also have of the red, um, I have this much left of the red. So what I'm thinking is I could choose another pattern because he has some really cute intarsia patterns for, for boys. And the, the little design part, I think only uses like one ball of this. So what I might do is um, figure out which one I wanna knit and then just order the main color and use this out that way. Because, um, oh, I should like have the label out. It is such a nice yarn. So there is um, 148 yards in this 50 gram ball. And it is 76% cotton, 15% yak, and 9% nylon. And I have never knit with anything containing yak before. And at least in this combination, it, this sweater is so, so soft. This might be one of the one of the softest sweaters that I have ever made, which for Owen I think is so perfect. Um, you know, because I don't want I don't want him complaining. I want him really liking the things that I make for him. But I just wanted to show you really quickly. Um, just what the yarn looks like. So it's kind of like, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's, it's kind of like twisted in a, in a braid almost. So I don't know. I really don't know how well, um, how well that is showing, but it's just, it's interesting. It, it kind of looks like a braided cord somehow. Um, okay. Now the, now the lighting got weird because I, there we go. Um, yeah, so it kind of just looks like, like a cord. It's like, it's a very round, it's a very round yarn. And so I have, maybe, maybe it's chain plied. Is this what chain plied looks like? I honestly have no idea. Um, so yeah, but it's, it was so soft to knit with. Um, so this is just a raglan construction. So I did the, um, the back panel first and it's just solid on the back and you know, you can see like it has quite a steep, um, decrease going to the neckline. So like if you're not realizing that you're going to pick up also across across the shoulders because the construction of this you can see in the neckline here 
it's not just the the front up against the back with the shoulders you know so it's got the shoulder set in sleeves like this um, so like when you're knitting it in pieces it looks like this tiny little neckline and you're like how is that gonna fit over his head but it's because of the way that the the shaping is constructed for the set in sleeves and now I'm gonna flip it inside out and show you what I mean about how I did this completely wrong. I know how to do intarsia. I, I just did this whole cardigan. Um, now I did do this before the cardigan, but I had done a little bit of intarsia before. I don't know why. Why did I do floats? Can somebody tell me why? Clearly, I was not paying attention at all. At all. That might be my, that might be Owen's bus getting home. I hear a bus. Um, so, I absolutely love doing seaming. Mattress stitch is just super fun. I didn't used to love doing seaming, but now that I'm good at it, um, really like it. It just, it looks, everything looks so clean. And I love when you have the seams because then it's like an easy place to, to weave the ends into. Um, and I put these little, um, these little tags in to the side seam over here. So again, this one is um, Kylie and the Machine. And this one is a hand, is the handmade one. And then this one says, made with love. And then I just, um, I wrote his name on the other side of it so that like sometimes when he's at school he always wears a t-shirt underneath his sweaters and then sometimes um, if he gets a little bit warm he'll take his sweater off and so just if it ever gets left there in his classroom or something his teacher will know exactly whose sweater it is so now yesterday um my husband got him dressed in the morning and he tried to put him in some kind of sweater vest that was a gift from a relative several years ago and in a size too big and now he's the right size for it and owen took one look at this thing this like sweater vest and he said daddy i can't wear that they'll pick on me and so he was like, okay, well, we'll find something different. And then my husband took this out of the drawer and he was like, yes, that's what I want to wear. Mommy made that for me. So I love <laughs> that I am knitting my kid th things that he is confident to wear and confident that his classmates are not going to pick on him. So yeah, I just, I remember going through school and having those fears constantly so I just you know my son loves lizards we went to visit his yaya down in Florida a couple of years ago maybe the summer before this past summer and when I used to my husband and I met down in Florida and they have these cute little lizards down there and I just love them I think that they're so adorable and they're so fun and he just had the best time trying to catch the lizards and we got a few um you know and they would like sit in your hand and you know so that was something that was really fun for him so then i knit him um this sweater it's actually a newt but i mean looks like a lizard to me so so yeah so owen is so knit worthy <laughs> So I wanted to share that sweater with you because he pulled it out yesterday and wore it. So since I didn't have a whole lot of whips and finished objects to talk about, I thought that I would talk about another sweater that I had recently completed. Okay, so also in the Knitworthy section today, I, I'm gonna show you some socks that I have made for my husband, Bryce. He has huge feet. He has huge feet. Um, I think in the very first episode, I had told you that I had just finished knitting him Charlie Brown socks. This thing could basically be Christmas stockings. They are so big. So I washed them 
the other day and they're dry and ta-da, here they are in all of their glory. I gave him this sock last Christmas. I, I gave him one sock. He just, his feet are so big. He's size 12 and he's got like really like, he's stocky. He's got like thick legs, thick calves. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. So, so this took a while. So let me tell you the yarn that I used for this. Um, the yellow is an MCN, I think it's MCN blend. It's got a little bit of cashmere in it. Um, and it is Ba yarn and I don't think it's Sonoma. There's another one that starts with an S. I don't have the label on me, but um, yeah, I'm not, I don't exactly remember which base it is on. So I will look that up and insert the base here, but it is so soft. And I couldn't find um, like a black yarn anywhere, like for socks in like the, the yarn shop where I found this yarn. And so what I did was I had some solid black, I think it's Patton's Croy sock yarn. And so it's, um, it's a little bit thicker, but that's okay because I knew I was just going to use it for the chevron stripe and for the um, heel and toe. So I was hoping that I was going to have enough of the yellow to get through a second sock and I am so glad that I did. Um, I don't know why my chevron stripes turns out different sizes but by the time I even realized that I had basically knit almost the entire sock and there was no way there was no way I was ripping back an entire husband's sock to try to get the chevron to grow and my tension to be a little bit looser like it was on this one it just wasn't happening so he loves them <laughs> he doesn't care that they're like a little bit different sizes so for these socks I didn't really use a pattern what I did was I cast on 80 stitches yeah 80 stitches and I did a two by two ribbing for three inches it's loud Sometimes in the woods behind our house, the, they ride, ride dirt bikes. It's pretty loud. Um, anyway, so I did um, a two by two knit pearl ribbing for the cuff, and then I did just stockinette. And then I had found just somebody's free chart for the chevron, which I just inserted. So it was like a 40 stitch chart, and so I just had to do it twice because 80 stitches um, and then I did a heel flap and gusset and just a, a toe like a I don't know this guy's like cat hair on this already I just took these out of his drawer but um, yeah just a regular old like round rounded toe I don't know Kitchener stitch so that I have like the cutest picture of Owen. I can't remember if he's like actually trying them on or if he's just holding them up in front of his legs, but they like, they like come up. They're like, they're so huge next to him. So I'm gonna put that in there so you can like get an idea of how big <laughs> these things are. If you couldn't already. Um, all right, so. These were my first pair of successful husband socks. I have knit my husband, his name is Bryce, I have knit him three other pairs of socks. And I have them here, and I'm going to show you what happened. <laughs> okay, so first, um, one of these socks, I had knit 
way before I even met my husband for an evil ex-boyfriend and I had only had one sock done. Thankfully, he has the same size feet, my husband, as my evil ex-boyfriend. Um, so I don't have the label anymore. I think it's like a Schackenmeyer yarn or something. Um, I don't remember the stitch pattern that I use, but this yarn is so pretty. It's like a grayish bluish with orange specks in it. And the stitch pattern, I don't remember which one it is, but I got it out of Charlene Church's um, Sensational Knitted Socks book. So if I can figure out what the stitch pattern was for these. Actually, I, I might have put it in my Ravelry project. So I'm just go to my Ravelry and check there. I know that these socks are definitely there. So he has worn these. And so I just kept knitting him socks like the same size. So then the next pair I knit him were these amazingly beautiful socks. So this was out of a um, Zauber ball, like one of those crazy, I don't remember exactly the, the name, but you know, like where it just like it changes and it's, they're not exactly the same. And so it's like a, a nice, it's like a brown with orange so nice and autumnal and um so this one i just love how they're like a little bit different i love these socks and then the other ones that i knit him again i have no idea what yarn it was are these and these are beautiful too and he loves them all now I come to find out that they don't fit him well. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you, I fixed one of these two socks and I have to go back and do it for all the others. Um, do you see the difference <laughs> in length between these two socks? I've been knitting his socks, these ginormous husband socks, I have been knitting too big. Why would I do that to myself? Why didn't I just measure? So yes, he has big feet, but not as big as I thought that they were. I mean, look how many inches that is there. So I, <laughs> what was I thinking? I'm just a better knitter now, I think is what it is. Um, I mean, I was sure that I had measured, but apparently not. <laughs> um, so I, there is one of these, which one is it? Oh, yeah, these. Um, oh, okay. So the same thing with these. There was one of these two socks fit him like really well. It must be this, this smaller one because there's a reason that I have these here. So that's what it is. Okay. So these ended up being slightly different sizes and this one fit him so well that um, I, I now need to rip back the toe because I'm not knitting this whole sock again because he will wear these he is knit worthy and he loves them but he says they fit funny so I'm gonna have to just rip that back and redo the toe and the same thing on on that one and then I don't know both of both of these socks so I have like four socks total that I have to redo um let's see yeah, so you can see, like there's the heel together. So they're all too big. <sighs> oh well, I'm gonna fix them. They've been sitting downstairs though for like well over a year and so far I only fixed one sock. And so he has like, he's got these two that fit they, they don't match so but his Charlie Brown socks they're perfect and yes yeah, so I got it right I got the length of the foot right with these and so I was so happy um, yeah so that is everything I have for knitworthy today so for spinning today I 
I did work through just a tiny bit more of this beautiful um, blue faced Leicester Leicester I don't know how to say it um, but this beautiful fiber in all of my favorite jewel toned colors um, this is by Frab Just Fibers, and this is what I have left that I still have to spin. It's still quite a bit. Um, so, I don't know, I must have taken my other drop spindle out. I've been doing it on this one and on another one because I was working a little bit with Owen, teaching him how to spin. But last time, I only had like two small, um, two small singles cakes to show you and I don't really have that much more done but what I did was I I spun like a little bit more on each spindle and this is falling apart and then what I did was I I got the yarn off of the spindle so that I could totally start fresh so I don't know this one kind of fell apart a little bit but I have also I've got this much now that was taken off of my larger spindle and then this one was taken off of the smaller one so now I have all of this spun up into singles and a little bit of fiber to still spin up so I'm gonna see what I can do to get the rest of this spun up by my next podcast. We'll see. <laughs> that might be a really big promise. So I'm not going to promise it. I'm just going to say I'll see what I can do to get through the rest of that. Um, but that is all that I have for my spinning section today. We did a little tiny bit, which was more than I had done in several months. So progress. Um, but that's everything that I have. Okay. So the very last section that I have for today is acquisitions. And it's not a lot, but I do have something to share. Um, okay, so I went to the bookstore the other day and they had Pom Pom magazine. So I didn't yet have this issue and so I picked it up. And so um, this is Oh, which one is this? It's number, this one is number 34 and it is from autumn, it's autumn 2020. So I was able to get my hands on this. I was super excited about that. Um, I don't know yet if I will knit anything from here, but I love the Pom Pom magazines. I am especially excited for the next issue to come out and I have pre-ordered that one because there were so many things so colorful Stephen West does the next one with um I don't even remember but it was amazing and um yeah so this is the home issue with guest editor Ocean Rose and so I was really excited to finally find that I mean we're in New York so my bookstore always gets them pretty delayed because overseas and then things take even longer these days with um, COVID and all that stuff so so that was one thing that I picked up and then the other thing I picked up was a pre-order that I had ordered back in September from Susan B. Anderson I'm not gonna say Susan B. Anthony again like I did last time Susan B. Anderson, she, her kits get me, get me hard all the time. Um, I don't order every single one, but she had a pre-order for the Love Owls kit. And, um, and the pattern so far is only available in Making Magazine, which I have never picked up. And I haven't even had a chance yet to flip through this. Um, but I want to find the page that um, her her pattern is on so that I can just show you the picture I mean I can just stick it in anyway um, 
this looks like a really beautiful magazine. Like I seriously, I got it the other day, but I haven't even had it yet. I told you it's been a busy week. Have not flipped through it yet. Um, there's a lot of cute stuff in here. If only I sewed, um, there would be a ton of things. Here we go, here's the knit section. So there is a knit and crochet section. Here we go. Um, oh my goodness. So this, how adorable are these owls? So, I have not actually made a kit yet, even though I have bought several, but these need to happen. And I, I'm so excited. So I wanna show you, um, you, can, you can choose from her site, like whether you just want the kit or if you want the kit and the magazine, which I did because that's where the pattern is. Um, but like some time from now, you'll be able to, she'll be able to release the pattern on her website and then you'll be able to just get it as a PDF. Um, so look at this, she attaches um, her little tag with a cute little stitch marker. Can't ever have too many stitch markers. Um, but I loved the colors and so um, I, grabbed the kit and so it's her home worsted weight um 100 american wool so this is the picket fence color and there's the specs right there on this yarn so you get that and then she gives you just the right amounts that you need for the other details so i don't know offhand what color this is but it's like a, a golden yellow. And then this is like a tannish, grayish, beige-ish, but it's so pretty. And so then she also includes like whatever else you're gonna need. And so there's this little piece of felt. So that's what comes in this kit. Um, I think that in there the eyes and stuff were embroidered on so when they're not like sometimes she'll give you like the the attachments the brads and stuff for the eyes um when when her patterns when her kits include like a more structured eye like that so that is my whole acquisition section was that i finally got this in the mail and that is everything i have for you today I do have a special guest for you now. Um, Owen went to the yarn shop with me over the weekend and we just went there because I had to pick up a little sock yarn that I had ordered. And so when we got home, he had, he had picked up a couple little things from the yarn shop and he said that he wanted to film a little segment with me for my acquisition section. And so it's a little out of control because that is Owen. And when this comes out, it's gonna be his birthday on Sunday. So he is turning six. So when you are watching this, I will have a six-year-old, a fresh six-year-old boy. Um, yeah, so he joined me and he is, he's very fun and he has a lot of energy and this will give you a little bit of insight into what my days <laughs> parenting this child are like a little bit so we have fun he's a good kid um but i'm gonna insert that here and that will be the rest of this video thank you guys so much for watching um i'm pretty sure that owen did a little a little sign off <laughs> for us together i think we did something together at the end of the clip um so enjoy um enjoy owen and meeting owen and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button i am so appreciative for all of the views and subscribers that have come to my channel until next week i will say goodbye and here is my son bye bye hi everybody i'm lisa and this is owen
and we are from the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. And it is Saturday, so Owen is home from school. Whoops. <laughs> and I got a call or a message from my from Tony from my local yarn shop, Knitting Cove, and she said that my Earth sock yarn had arrived. So we just made a quick 10 minute trip over to the yarn, yarn shop, shop and we, we wanted to show, show you, you some of the stuff we got. Yeah. So, and Owen got quite a few little things and so he was excited to show you everything. <laughs> what do you want to show everybody first? You want to show your fingernails since no. you were? Yeah. She, he was sad he forgot to show Miss Tony his fingernails. So, what do we say? Nail polish is for anybody who Any. likes nail polish. Yeah. Not just girls. Not just girls. Yeah. Now the kids on his bus say that nail polish is just for boys, but you know what mommy and daddy say? No, no, just for girls. Oh, that's what I meant, <laughs> just for girls. <laughs> not just for boys. But mommy and daddy say nail polish is for anybody who loves to wear nail polish. And Owen loves to wear nail polish, so nail polish is for Owen. So he is super excited. Mommy, the next thing I found the top is for me, so I'm going to show them. Something. Okay. And I'm going to let Owen take it over from here, okay? Yeah. Do you want to tell first what you're wearing, your knits that you're wearing? Hat. This is a top this hat that I made you last year, right? Or two years ago? Mm -hmm. one, one year? I don't remember. But it's a, a raccoon, and then I made you what? Raccoon. Matching mittens. You want to put those on really quick? Yeah. And show everybody? So what I do with his mittens is I, there's always a little bit extra of the hat yarn left over. And so I do the cuffs and then I just find a coordinating yarn and it, they turn out so cute. Okay. And he, it's a little chilly out here. So he wanted to. I just wanted stuff. to take this out so it can be easier to hold. Yeah, that's easy. fine. That makes sense. All right. So what's up next? Okay. But you got to tell them. Ready? This is Mouse. And who is Mouse? One of your best friends? Mm -hmm. Who made Mouse for you? Me? Did I do a good job? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is her. This is Mouse, and Mouse talks like this. Mouse and Bunny and Owen always. Oh, don't tell a bunny yet. Oh. <laughs> do you have somebody else to introduce? Yeah. Who is this? Bunny. Then that's Bunny. So who are... <laughs> Bunny, that was quite rude. <laughs> okay. How old are you, Owen? Five. And then do you have a birthday next weekend? Yeah. So how old are you going to be? Six. Yeah. So this is six-year-old, almost six-year-old boy humor. Ten. Lots of farts going on around here. You're not going to be ten. <laughs> All right. Hey, can you show everybody on the other animal that mouse can be when you flip her upside down? Whoa. An elephant. It's kind of reversible. <laughs> so that's kind of funny, right? So every once in a while, mouse pretends to be an elephant. So bunny and mouse are his... Fuzznose, too. Fuzznose. Fuzznose, okay. Fuzznose. <laughs> so bunny and mouse are his best friends. They go everywhere, and they read books together. Okay, so first, what is this? Hot head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you like the hat that mommy made for you? What do you like about it? This is almost to the top of mommy's hat. Almost. This is how tall mommy's hat is. Yeah, do you like? And this is how tall mommy's hat is. Can you tell me, tell me about the, the hat? I didn't um, tell you what animals it's made out of. Your hat. <laughs> your hat's made out of baby alpaca and merino sheep. Baby alpaca and merino sheep. Merino sheep. Yeah. And what did we pick up from the yarn shop to go with your hat? Not that. <laughs> yes, uh, that, that, that. Let me show that. Okay, so. <laughs> This is the sock yarn that mommy picked up from the yarn shop. So this is the earth unique sock yarn in the Christmas colors. So that's why we went to the yarn shop. And then I needed some more of the Euclan, so Euclan, Euclan soap in the grapefruit scent. I was running out. I've only finished 
one mitten so far. But he looks like a happy kid, doesn't he? What do you like so about those? Hold on, leave this on until you get the blue thing. What's the blue thing in there that you need to show? Yeah, so look at what we found at the yarn Wait, shop. Oh, I need a tag. Yeah, we found a bright blue pom-pom that mommy's gonna put on top. Isn't that gonna be so cute? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like the perfect shade of blue. I love it. I think that Woo. this Woo. all looks Woo. completely adorable on Woo. you. All right, and then Owen in the car on the way there asked if he could get some buttons. You wanna put that one back on? Yeah. Yeah. That on my hair. You got Mom, a haircut hey. the other day too, so you're looking awesome. All right. Is it the right way? Yep. There's your raccoon. Okay, so Owen picked out some buttons and- Don't tell her that yet. Sorry. All right, you take it over from here then. Opening it. How many buttons do you have? Six. Of each. All right, so we gotta hold it. I'll hold it up super close. So this is the first one. He, well, actually, these are the third ones he picked out. These little whales, Miss Tony gave him as a little birthday gift because his birthday is next week. So he's got six whale buttons. And what else? This is the only one that you get. That's okay. And he picked out these um, T-Rex buttons. And these are the first ones he picked out. So we have six of each. Um, and then he's got these little Christmas colored dolphins. Yeah. Hey, look them at back. her sweater. Okay, I can talk about and my sweater. Dots. Okay. What do you want to say about their specs, right? All right. So you want to hold it up closely? <laughs> okay, so. Cool, huh? I know. I'll tell you what my sweater is made out of. Thank you, Owen. So, Owen, let me tell you about my shawl. So this is not blocked. I've had this done for a couple years, but this is called the Long Island Shawl. And a few, maybe three years ago, yeah. I um, asked, package. I asked for this yarn for Christmas. And this is from Long Island Yarn and Farm. And it is a bulky weight. And I'll have to insert the, I just threw this on really quick because it, it's cold out here, but this is gorgeous. And I have met and pet all the animals that this was knit with and my husband gave me the yarn for Christmas a few Christmases ago and I knit it up and I absolutely adore this thing so I just I like to throw it on when it's chilly out and I'm kind of in between a jacket and sweater okay we're gonna say goodbye now because that's everything that I had to okay. share having a great weekend Hi. Bye from Lisa and Owen. And wait, don't stop it yet. What do we need to tell them to do? If they like this video, please hit the subscribe button down below. And give it a thumbs, thumbs up, up if you like it. Yeah? And, and subscribe.